annoyed by the noise that your laptop fan is making, you're not alone. But don't despair in the future your laptop might be cooled with lasers. Yes, lasers. Let's have a look. This video is sponsored by The Economist, to which we recently got a subscription and have been really happy with. The Economist is a weekly news magazine that covers global affairs and economics, but also science and technology. It's not just big headlines, their articles have substance. I've also generally found their coverage politically balanced and well-researched. And as a scientist, I particularly appreciate that they have really good science coverage. The other week, for example, they had a super interesting interesting story about how AI can help diplomats in peace negotiations or otherwise navigate pitfalls of human interactions when the stakes are high. I had no idea that people were even working on this. I find their articles generally well written and to the point. If you don't have time for reading, The Economist also has an audio edition so you can listen to the week's biggest stories while you're on the go. If you want to get a clearer picture of what What's really happening in the world, consider checking out The Economist. I can really recommend it. If you go there, use my link economist.com slash Sabina because that'll get you 20% off. And now back to the science news of the day. We live in the age of computing, there's no doubt about it. Like computers can read and analyze huge amounts of data, produce sophisticated models, and now use artificial intelligence is driving progress across all disciplines. But for half a century, the increases in computing power have relied on Moore's law, the ability to pack an ever-increasing number of transistors in microchips, making them increasingly powerful. And Moore's law has been declared declared dead a few times in the past years for a simple reason. The smaller you make transistors and the closer you pack them together, the more difficult it becomes to cool them. The overheating of microchips is currently the biggest hurdle on the way to further miniaturization. Traditionally, cooling microchips works by blowing air over them. Some newer designs envision small fluid channels enveloping the transistors to more efficiently transport away heat. But those channels would also make the chips larger again. And fluid channels have limits on how much they can be miniaturized themselves. So this seems unlikely to help much. The heat is not just in the way of continuing Moore's law, it's a problem already. According to a study from Berkeley Lab, up to 40% of the energy that data centers consume goes just into cooling. And as chip designs push for higher transistor density and performance, the cooling challenge gets worse. Almost all supercomputing clusters are now liquid-cooled, but there's only so much heat that liquid can carry away. I don't even want to know how many megawatts we collectively burned by giblifying our holiday photos. Enter lasers. Yes, lasers can be used for cooling somewhat intuitively because when I think cooling microchips, my first thought is definitely at lasers. But upon second thought, this has been done in physics research for a long time. It's called laser cooling, and indeed there was a Nobel Prize for it in 1997. Laser cooling works by bouncing light off particles so that the light carries away net energy. It usually works by tuning light to an atomic or molecular transition. The light gets absorbed but re-emitted with higher energy. That it gradually reduces the average energy of the atoms, so it reduces the temperature. Laser cooling has allowed researchers to study quantum effects more precisely, build highly accurate atomic clocks, and confuse ground reviewers. But this method of laser cooling can't be directly used for microchips. For one thing, it typically requires isolated atoms in a vacuum, but also it makes use of very specific atomic transitions that just aren't available in a standard semiconductor chip. However, scientists have come up with a variant of laser cooling that can be used for semiconductors. It's called resonant damping. Resonant damping is what you do if you slow down a swing without dragging your feet on the ground. You accelerate in the opposite direction of where you're going, effectively taking away energy. 
Resonant damping for a microchip basically works the same way. Just replace the swing with the semiconductor and yourself with a laser. Easy enough. To cool something with resonant damping, you direct laser light at a hot spot in the material and tune it to a frequency that encourages the material to emit more photons than it absorbed. This will carry heat away as light, so it cools. And this isn't just a theory. Sandia Labs in the United States is pursuing this method in collaboration with Maxwell Labs. According to the website, Labs is developing a laser cooling protein type expected to yield 200% performance gains on the latest NVIDIA and AMD hardware with a 40 times efficiency improvement compared to liquid cooling using the same net power. Those are stunning numbers, but they're not totally unreasonable. Lasers aren't exactly known for being energy efficient, but the beauty of this method is that you can selectively target localized hotspots. These hotspots are usually only a few hundred microns across, but with a laser you can focus on them and not waste energy on cooling something that doesn't need cooling. The idea has been around for about a decade. Already in 2012, researchers at the Niels Bohr Institute demonstrated that they could use this method to cool a particular semiconductor, gallium arsenide, down to just 4 Kelvin. Then in 2020, another group of researchers demonstrated that such laser cooling systems could be miniaturized and be integrated with microchips. This isn't going to be rolled out tomorrow, but it's a plausible and feasible method that could make a big difference within, say, a decade or so. And then maybe my laptop will stop sounding like a hairdryer so I can hear myself grinding my teeth during updates. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.